Well, good morning, boys and girls, and thanks for joining us again this morning for Sunday School. Now, you'll remember that last week we spoke about how we can know that God exists. We spoke about the fact that God is eternal. Eternal means he has always been, he is, and he always will be. Well, now, this week we're going to talk about something that's very difficult even for adults to fully comprehend, but it's in the Bible, and so we know it's true, and it's about the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, you think about it in this simple way. It's probably the easiest way to describe it, even for adults as well. Think of it like this. God in heaven is, is our Father. When God came to be born on earth, he was Jesus the Son. And after Jesus left this earth, he sent the Holy Spirit to be our helper and our guide. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. If you turn in your Bible to the very start, to Genesis chapter 1 and verses 1 to 3. We're just going to take a wee quick look at those verses. Now it mentions here God the Father and God the Holy Spirit in these verses. So let's first of all look at Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 to 3. It's talking about the Trinity here. So Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. So you see there, what was God doing in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1? It tells us he was creating the heaven and the earth. Verse 2, it says, moving upon the face of the waters. The Holy Spirit was moving upon the face of the waters. And when did this all take place? In the beginning. So right at the very creation of this world, we see there that there was God the Father and God the Holy Spirit mentioned. Now we're going to move on. I'm going to let you see how Jesus was also there a little bit later on, okay? So in verse 3, God said, let there be light. So of course, Light was immediately created by the power of his voice. He spoke it into existence. He spoke light into existence. He spoke this very world into existence by the power of his word. So in the beginning, God was the creator and the spirit of God was there with him. Now, if you turn in your Bible to John chapter 1, turn over in your Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, John chapter 1 and verses 1 to 5. We want to take a wee quick look at those verses. All right, so they tell us a wee bit more about the creation and about the mystery of the Trinity. So who wrote this book? That's quite an easy question, isn't it? John wrote this book. Now this was not John the Baptist. This was John, one of Jesus' closest friends and disciples when he was here on this earth. And there are two me persons mentioned. You listen in John chapter 1 and verse 1. John wrote this. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay. So, no mention of the Holy Spirit there, but it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Two persons. John is talking about something that happened right at the very start of creation here. Okay. At the very start. And he says, in the beginning was the word. And what else does it say about the word? It says, the word was God. Okay, the word was God. Who was made, what was made by the word? Verse 3, all things were made by him. Everything, all things were made. And what was in the word? Verse 4, in him was life, it says. And what was the life? In verse 4. And the life was the light of men. Are you starting to think of anybody here? The light was the life of men. And where did this light shine? Verse 5. And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Can you think who that might be? Who, was, who is the light of the world? Well it's Jesus isn't it? Jesus, the Son of God. Now, 
It says in John chapter 1 and verse 14, if you look a wee bit further down there, just John chapter 1 verse 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Well now you know who was made flesh and dwelt among us, don't you? It was the Lord Jesus, right? So who is the word? The word is Jesus. So John wrote, in the beginning was the word. What did he mean by in the beginning? He meant at creation. He meant when this world was created. The word, which we have said is Jesus, was with God. So Jesus was with God at the beginning, right? And we've also said that the Holy Spirit was with God at the beginning. So you had Jesus, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit, all present at creation, the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So that's how we know, that's how we know that our great God is in the form of three persons, right? Because the Holy Bible tells us that he's in the form of three persons. Now, to someone who does not know the Lord as their saviour, they will find this impossible to understand. And even for you or me who are saved, we still find it difficult because our minds are human. We're not capable of taking all this information in, but we know of a surety that the word of God is the truth and that God has told us this because this is exactly how it is. This is exactly how it is. I want to, you to move on a wee bit into the book of Matthew there. Turn up Matthew chapter 3. I want to show you something else here. Matthew chapter 3 and verses 16 and 17. And it says this. I'm going to just read them to you and then we're just going to tell you a couple of wee things about them, okay? Matthew 3, 16 and 17. And Jesus, when he was baptised, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a, like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Do you know what was happening here? This was the baptism of Jesus. Do you remember who baptised Jesus? It was John the Baptist, wasn't it? So do you remember that? And Jesus... When he was baptised, it tells us here, it says in verse 16, he was baptised. And it also tells us in verse 16, someone came down from heaven in the form of a dove. Did you see who it was? The Spirit of God. And a voice was heard from heaven. A voice was heard from heaven. Who was that? Well, what did he say? He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. This was God the Father speaking here. This voice from heaven was God the Father. And you can see the three persons of the Trinity in these two verses. You can see Jesus the Son being baptised. You can see the Spirit of God coming down and descending upon him. And you can see God the Father speaking from heaven and saying, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So, you can see in these, just in these three short verses, you have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And as I said to you, it is difficult for us to understand because we are just human. We are just flesh and blood. And these things are well beyond our comprehension. But we know, we know for sure that this is the truth because God has told us in his word, the Bible, Anything he tells us in the Bible is true. It says here, it says here, there are three persons, yet they are one God. Three persons, but one God. If you think of it like we have a rod here for poking at the fire, and it's one long handle, and at the bottom it splits into three so that it gives you more room to move the coal around and disturb the fire and try to get it going. Well, if you think of God in that sense of it's one implement, but it divides into three parts at the bottom. 
God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, but yet it's one. It's just one God, right? So it says, remember when we talk about God in heaven, we mean God the Father. When we talk about God in heaven, we mean God the Father. When we talk about God on earth, we mean Jesus the Son. And when we talk about the one who was sent by Jesus to help us obey, who do we mean? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who, when you're saved, when you ask Jesus to come and, and save you, the Holy Spirit is sent to dwell within you and he guides you and he helps you and he shows you what you should do. He gives you that sense of conscience that you know when when you're asked to do something that's wrong, that voice in your head tells you that it's wrong, don't do it. That whenever you're not doing something that you should be doing, like reading your Bible, like saying your prayers, like being kind to your brothers and sisters and doing what your mommy and daddy tell you to do. When you're not doing those things, there's a wee voice in your head that says to you, whatever your name is, you know that you should be doing that or you know that you shouldn't be doing that, whatever, whichever way it may be. So that's how the Holy Spirit helps us, okay? That's his role. Each of these three parts of the Lord God have a different role to play. And Jesus' role was obviously to come to this earth as the sacrificial lamb to die on that cross so that you and I could be reconnected to God the Father who is in heaven, so that we could be reconnected to him by shedding his precious blood. So, you know, boys and girls, it's it's very important when you read your Bible to believe that everything that it tells us, everything that it shows us is true. And the Trinity is just one part of that. The Trinity is just one part of that, boys and girls. And I'll keep saying, not easy to understand, but we know because it's in there, it's completely true. So just for a final little recap before we finish. What's the Bible talking about in Genesis 1 when it says in the beginning? It's talking about creation, the creation of the world. Who was present at creation? God the Father, the Spirit of God, and Jesus the Son of God, the Word. Do you remember it called Jesus the Word? So all three parts of the one God were present at the very beginning. All three parts of the one God existed before this world ever existed. They have always existed. They are eternal. God is eternal. So some people might wonder about the Trinity because they can't figure it out. It doesn't make sense if you don't believe in God's word and if you don't trust him. Now it says here, we do trust God and of course we do trust God and we trust his word and we know his word is true because God cannot lie. God cannot lie. And we have faith that God is three persons in one great God, just like the Bible teaches. So I thank you for listening to this short word this morning, boys and girls. And I just wish that we could all be together in Sunday school and that we could be meeting face to face to talk about this and answer questions maybe too but we can't do that at the minute but in God's will that will happen again in time so in the meantime you read your bible you take a wee look over those verses yourself and think about the things that we have talked about today and understand how much God loves you and cares about every single thing that happens in your life Okay, so if you close your eyes, just going to finish with a short prayer. Dear Lord God, we just thank you this morning for this word from your holy word, the Bible. We thank you, Lord, that you are the almighty God. And we thank you that you sent Jesus to die on that cross. And we thank you for your precious Holy Spirit who was sent down and who lives in our hearts and helps us and guides us and shows us just exactly what we should do and think and say and helps us to understand how to please you because without him we cannot please you so we ask you this day to continue with each family with each boy and girl who's listening to this 
for all their mummies and daddies, all their wider family circle. And we ask you to watch over each one of us, Lord. Keep us all safe, bless us, and bring us back again next week together around your holy word to hear more about the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit for your blessings upon us. Please continue with us today and we thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen.